Over 4.5 billion pounds of french fries are consumed annually in America alone. They are a favorite midday snack, side dish, and wine companion. You can eat them as a side dish, lunchtime snack, a late night wine session, or snack. These exquisite fries, with their crispy and golden perfection, are a delight to both prepare and taste. Frying them is a mere step in their journey. If we rewind, you will see that they went through many processes, and these fries were actually potatoes planted by someone. So let's start with that. But before, don't forget to like this video and hit the subscribe button for more videos like these. The process starts with preparing the soil. Although it can be done manually, this process is assisted by efficient and state-of-the-art machinery like this 12-row folding potato cultivator. Machines like these are intended to prepare the seed beds and break up soil in farming operation. With its set of heavy-duty tines that are designed to rotate at high speeds, they are able to create deep furrows and mix subsoil with surface material in no time. The goal of this process is to help prepare the soil and make sure that it can sustain the growth of the potatoes. It also assists in aeration of the soil, which results in improved water retention, factors that are highly needed for the healthy growth of potatoes. After that, the farmers will proceed to planting the potatoes. Similar to soil preparation, machines that can handle multiple rows at a time are also highly needed in this step. These machines help farmers in the task involving furrow opening, seed metering, seed placement at proper depth, and the formation of ridges to cover seed tubers. High quality machinery is used at this step to make sure that they grow healthily. Through these planters, farmers are also able to maximize their yield while still maintaining proper spacing between plants within each row, hence addressing the problem of spacing within farms. Potatoes need to have enough available soil water to achieve their highest yield and quality. Once there are inconsistencies in the water level that they receive, certain defects like malformations or scabs appear. This is a serious problem. To ease the lives of potato growers, Valmont Industries has designed a unique center pivot irrigation system, the Pivot 101. This system consists of a pump station that captures water from the source, such as a river, well, or reservoir, and transports the water via pipes to the central tower or pivot point. Subsequently, the water flows through the span structure and gets dispersed to the sprinkler. These sprinklers are designed to provide water droplets of optimal size, thereby enhancing the absorption of water into the soil. It is worth noting that the center pivot operates automatically. The center pivot is powered by electric motors that are lightweight and efficient. These motors are designed specifically for wheel operation, enabling the irrigation system to easily navigate challenging terrain. The sprinkler center pivot is automatically adjusted by an electric motor with a fraction of a horsepower to match the specific dimensions and topography of each field. This ensures accurate water application based on soil types and topography, which increases production. The benefits of center pivot irrigation include higher yields, protection against drought, lower production cost, improved efficiency, and wider scale. Compared to conventional irrigation, it uses 25 to 50 percent less water and offers more accuracy. Using center pivots, farmers may water several crop at once and apply pesticides and fertilizer. Thanks to technological advancement, growers can now remotely regulate irrigation from a PC, tablet, or smartphone, or from a control panel located at the pivot point. In about 80 to 100 days, a potato will get into a matured stage where it is ready to be harvested. For farmers, harvesting potatoes is a crucial procedure since it allows them to gather and store their harvest for use all year long. Typically, potatoes are picked when they are completely grown, the largest and driest they can be. However, in large-scale scenarios, machines like the ROPA Kyler 2 are used for harvesting. With a 7.5-ton bunker and a completely hydraulic drive for maximum cleaning, the ROPA Kyler 2 is a trailed potato harvester, perfect for large-scale harvesting. With the help of a blade, potatoes are lifted from the bed and placed onto webs for sieving. The potatoes are then moved to a picking table and separation unit. Afterwards, the potatoes are moved to a trailer or potato box 
by a side elevator. Fuel consumption and tractor engine speed are decreased since the Kyler 2 runs independently of the PTO speed, keeping all cleaning units within the ideal speed range. Additionally, the harvester's entirely hydraulic drive minimizes noise and vibration. This machine helps harvest batches upon batches of potatoes in a very efficient way. Once the potatoes are harvested, they will be moved to a transporter so that farmers can set them aside first. A harvester can only hold so many potatoes at once, so it is extremely helpful that this potato crop cart is there to handle up to 35 tons of load. The crop cart is designed exclusively for handling crops on the field, such as collecting harvest from a harvester or filling a planter immediately on the field. Stronga trailers, on the other hand, convey the produce from fields to potato factories. When it arrives to the facility, the driver initiates the hydraulic system, which enables the trailer to tip for unloading. Fresh potatoes go down immediately into the feeding bunk. Of course, the whole process does not start without making sure that everything is clean. Potatoes are root crops, so it is natural that they may have debris of soil left on their surface. This is done to make sure that it is hygienic and no contaminants can get into the potatoes. It is not a smart move to do all of this manually. Well, if it only involves a few potatoes, you can definitely do that. However, if the facility needs to process tons of potatoes, it is more efficient to employ machines and couple it with manual labor. First of all, this machine pre-washes the potatoes to remove dirt, stones, and foreign objects. To prevent unwanted things from entering the machinery, it has a water-filled hopper that holds the potatoes and employs suction to separate them. This is the whole process of washing and destoning. Most of the time, potato peeling is done through the use of steam peeling machines. This is used when all of the peel needs to be removed. This means that batches of potatoes are exposed to steam, usually through a rotating pressure vessel. This is what makes the skin of the potatoes loosen up, resulting in an easier time peeling. The water underneath the potato skin is heated by the high pressure steam. When the vessel's pressure is then released, the water quickly expands and separates the potato's peel from its meat. Once the skin is softer or looser, the potatoes will be placed in a series of rollers that will gently peel off their skin. Another way to go about this is through batch peeling. This small batch peeler provides high potato yields and superior peeling control. It can be used with two or more batch peelers to minimize peel loss and cleaning need. With a configurable batch size and dwell time, along with an enclosed chamber, it provides consistent control over peeling. French fries, potato chips, and root vegetables like beets are excellent uses. It's simple to modify the abrasive surfaces to meet the needs of the product. There are also other processing facilities that make use of abrasive potato peelers. Although there can be different types of abrasive potato peelers, they have similar mechanisms behind them. First, the clean potatoes will be put into a bed of rotating abrasive rolls. These rolls have rough surfaces that rub against the skin of the potato. The potatoes will be in a tumbling motion in the bed which causes them to rub against each other. These are two things that do the peeling. After that, operators will run down water from the bed to flush out the peel waste. After peeling, the potatoes are checked and examined again. Examining potatoes multiple times is essential for food processing facilities. They do it for various reasons, but mainly to ensure product safety and cleanliness. Potatoes are important for human consumption. They must ensure that peeled potatoes meet quality standards and are suitable for specific uses, while also monitoring for any issues or defects. They do this through machines like the Roller Inspector. With grip profile rollers adjusted to robust plastic drive chains, the Roller Inspection Table, RLT, is a transport system. By rotating the potatoes, these rollers provide a visual examination. The potato that has been processed is delivered to the table for inspection. Another machine capable of doing this is the spiral roller grater. It has spiral-shaped, grooved plastic rollers that get wider and deeper as they go near the end. 
between every roller, the grooves create square apertures that get bigger. Transporting the product via an in-feed hopper featuring V-channels guarantees uniform dispersion across the grader's breadth. Until the holes are big enough for the potato to fall through, the product is transported through the grooves. The separating plates under the machine are adjusted to set the grading. Once they have made sure that the potatoes are all of high quality and safe for consumption, the next step of the process begins. The potatoes will now be sent to the area where the cutting is done. If we are talking about tons of potatoes, it is obvious that manual cutting is already out of the question. Good thing we now have innovations and machines that can do that. Now with industrial potato cutters, food processing companies can chop potatoes into many pieces. The machine has a frequency drive system and a vibration chute for ideal filling. Potatoes are carried to the cutting portion where two goods are sliced at the same time once they are positioned in the center of the knife. It is possible to have various knives on the left and right blocks, which enables halving on one track while creating four or eight segments on the other two. It is important to keep in mind that fresh water is needed throughout the process. This makes sure that the bearing brushes are lubricated and the starch is rinsed away. This machine can handle up to 15,000 kilograms an hour. After they are washed and cut into half for easier process, they will be measured by weight. Once they have been measured by weight and divided by batch, the actual process of making fries will begin. Here are the steps. French fries are usually long and thin slices of potatoes. They need to be cut into smaller pieces. For this purpose, a water knife cutting machine is used. It makes sure that all the pieces of French fries are cut in the same way and have relatively the same shape too. This is to maintain the quality of the fries. Since the potatoes have been subjected to a lot of water, it is now time to drain them away. Along with this process is the process of silver removal. Aside from keeping the potatoes clean and making sure that unwanted particles are removed, it also helps to make the whole process safer. Potatoes are very well known for their starch content. Although this is good to some extent, not removing it will affect the whole batch of french fries. This is why food processing facilities that deal with french fries always make sure to remove the starch from the potato. To get rid of any loose starch that might have gathered on the surface, they rinse it with plain water. Loose starch needs to be eliminated since it ruins frying oil and causes black smears on the chips. In order to get the desired quality and visual characteristics of fries, it is necessary to subject them to the bleaching procedure. This process is done through this machine. Just like when we talked about a while ago, potatoes are pretty sensitive. They can change color and get damaged in just a few minutes. If not properly prepared, they can even get damaged while cooking. To help maintain its color, texture, and taste, the potato fry has to go through a process called blanching first. This is the process where the potatoes are briefly immersed in hot water or steam to partially cook them. This helps it to soften up and also removes the excess starch in the potatoes. These machines are built to assist in the continuous blanching of potato slices. These machines have mastered how to inhibit enzyme activity to retain the natural color of the potato slices. It is also vital that the proper time or duration for blanching is followed. This is why the addition of controllers and indicators in the machine that adjust the conveying speed through the frequency control is beneficial. Not to mention that this can also be heated either by steam, electricity, or gas. Operators can also adjust the temperature of the water using this machine, but it is usually set to 95 degrees for blanching chips and should be 80 millimeters higher than the mesh belt. After the blanching process, the potatoes are then set aside to dry for a while. This is important so that the unwanted water content is flushed out and does not affect the frying process. Hot air is passed over the fries to start evaporating the surface moisture. Once the process of blanching is done, the batches of potatoes are given some time to rest first. Then the frying stage starts. Usually, if it is just a small batch of fries, you only need a pot to do this. Then the pot is loaded with oil and heated to a temperature of 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Once that is reached, a small amount of fries is added to the oil. This needs to be fried for about a couple of minutes, usually not longer than four minutes. One indicator that tells you that it is already cooked 
is when it already turns golden brown. Once that happens, it is important to take the fries and place it on a paper towel lined plate first. This is done to drain excess oil so you don't end up with super oily fries. Of course, just like the other steps, the process of frying is slightly different in a food processing facility since we are now talking about tons of fries. They also use machines to do this. To set the flavor and the temperature of the fries, they will now be left to cool for a while. This is important because the following procedures cannot be done when it is steaming hot. They need to be cooled down first. Now you may be wondering, we've just fried the french fries and now we are going to freeze them again? Will it not undo the whole thing? Well, there is a reason for this. When you fry a potato, it is more prone to spoiling. Since we are talking about fries that are meant to be sold on the market, they have to have a longer lifespan than that, right? This is done by freezing the hot fries. Through this process of freezing, the fries are kept fresh for a longer period of time. This is also done to make transport easier. Cooked fries are generally softer than frozen ones, so it will be easier to store and transport them this way. After all of those steps and processes, we now have come to one of the final steps in the food processing facility. This is the packaging. This is where the frozen fries are transferred to containers or packs with varying weights. Some even have specific flavors depending on demand. Finally, to make sure that the quality is kept to a maximum even when the product is traveling, its packaging will be sealed. This will also make sure that the french fries will not be contaminated and will still be delicious once they reach the market or your own table. Once this is done, they are ready to be transported to markets and restaurants. After all those steps, the french fries are now ready to be transported to the market. They are now displayed in grocery stores, in the stock rooms of restaurants, or probably in your own freezers. Who would have thought that a food we cook by simply frying it went through a lot before reaching our tables? Now you have an idea of how even processes like cooking and farming are connected by innovations in technology. Your favorite crispy and golden brown french fries are a product of the agriculture and technology crossover. Without these innovative and modern machines, we will never be able to experience this delightful treat. That ends our video on how potatoes are processed into french fries. From the farm to the fryer, it's a fascinating process that requires expertise and precision. If you found this video informative, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content like this. And remember to hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. Until next time, thanks for watching.